ready to learn about persistent memories. So what is persistent memories? Persistent memory are solid state devices that guarantees high performance and bright addressability. Now these devices could reside on our memory bus, same as DRAM. So because now these devices can reside on memory bus, they can allow DRAM-like access to the data, which is basically byte addressable access from CPU. But this also means that it has nearly the same speed and latency of DRAM and the non-volatility of NAND flash. Non-volatility is the key part behind our storage system, right? So if we are storing a data that is going to matter to us for a longer time, we better ensure that that's, non that's stored in a non-volatile media because if there is a power recycle, then we don't want this data to just vanish. But rather, after restart, we want to be able to re-access this data again. So the traditional storage media such as hard disk, and then we had SSDs. We had different, we currently have different um, variants of SSDs such as multi stream SSD. Key value SSDs. Zone namespace SSDs. Etc. But all these different variants of SSDs, what they guarantee is persistence. But how these SSDs are accessed is not at the granularity of granularity of byte. But if we have a solid state device, which may not be NAND based, but a solid still a solid solid state device that can be accessed at a byte level and it can reside in, into memory bus, then definitely it can provide us way better access latencies compared to SSDs. But because it's a solid state device, it's designed in a way that would guarantee the persistence and hence the name persistent memories. So it is a combination or like best of both worlds match between the DRAMs quick access latencies and good performance with the SSD's persistence and capacity. So as we just said that persistent memories are solid state devices. Now, how are these solid state devices made? Well, there are many different variants of persistent memories as well. Some of these variants are popularly known as phase change memory, PCM, which is constructed out of a form of a glass. So as we see here, like as we know that NAND is a particular type of transistor, in the same way, we see here the internal component of how this could look like. And another technology, um, using which persistent memories are constructed is 3D cross point. And we see here 3D cross point diode. We call the persistent memories that are constructed using this 3D cross point technology popularly today as Optane DIMS. And there are two major companies into this area, which is Intel. So you would, you would your name as Intel Optin Dim. Sorry. Intel Optin Dims and Micron. So Micron used to manufacture the solid state media that's required to uh, construct 3D cross point Optin memory. But then um, recently it's a news that it's going to get out of that. So no, it's no longer going to manufacture, but something. So until now, we know that these both companies are lead and there are different persistent memories 
known with different names, obtained DIMMs, obtained SSDs. These are constructed with an underlying solid state technology of 3D cross point. So what are the main benefits of persistent memory? Well, if you don't say me the benefit, what's the point of learning that, right? So first let's convey the benefits and let's get it clarified, like why we should learn about persistent memories. So we won't go into the hardware uh, data storage mechanism of, of the physics of the material and how this bytes zero and one is stored within different medias that we just saw here. But for our knowledge, we can just remember that, well, there is some solid state media, doesn't matter what, onto which we are able to store zeros and ones in a persistent state. And this media is byte addressable to us. Now we would learn about different, different uh, options that we have today, different advantages, different disadvantages, how to use this persistent memory in our operating system and, and storage systems. That's more interesting topic to us in this lecture. So coming to the advantages of persistent memory. First, persistent memory provides low latency, low access latencies, very similar to that of DRAM, quite not as fast as DRAM, but still well, much faster than the access latencies of other persistent storage media such as SSDs. This persistent memories are useful to increase the throughput. And when we say increase the throughput, through, we could achieve throughput much higher than SSDs and hard disks, obviously. Persistent memories are cheaper than DRAM. Now cheaper, how do we value cheaper? let's say cheaper per capacity. So per gigabyte or per terabyte or per megabyte or per byte of data stored, how much dollar are we paying? So if we have to buy a DRAM of size one terabyte, whatever it would cost would be way, way higher than buying a persistent memory of one terabyte. At least that's the promises that are made by the companies that are going to launch this technology into market, right? Persistent memory is cacheable. So this is a huge, huge, huge advantage over PCIe interconnected storage because now persistent memory can directly be accessed from CPU and the data stored on persistent memory could be cached on, on, on CPU cache lines. So we don't need to, irrespective of how data is stored, um, like opposite to how data is stored on PCIe-based storage devices, SATA-based storage devices, or SAS-based storage devices, which cannot directly, uh, the data stored on these devices are these storage, persistent storage medias are not usually directly uh, cacheable into CPU cache lines. So that's where we have um, DRAM and then we have whole bunch of intermediate layers with such as block layer that then interacts with these block devices. But now with persistent memories, we, we do not need these layers and persistent memory can directly interact with CPU. The real-time access to data allows ultra-fast access to large data set. Now, this is a big advantage, especially for applications that requires a huge data set sitting in memory, because for such applications, we would not be able to run such applications on a, on a, on a traditional storage system, which has limited amount of DRAM, but then large capacity available as the persistent storage. Um, but then what we would have to do is process things by parts. And sometimes processing by parts may not be an option or maybe a very um, overhead intensive option. So we application might not want to do that. Um, for such applications, persistent memory is a big boon because now we have this advantage of large capacity that usually used to be 
within the storage devices, such as hard disk SSDs, sitting at the memory level directly. So this memory, persistent memories are directly accessible by CPUs. Better quality of service. Now, what do we mean by quality of service? That means lower 99 to 3 nines, 4 nines, 5 nines, lower late, lower tail latencies compared to SSDs, especially when we have like a bursty workload where let's say our email servers, our email servers are one of the bursty workload. During whole night, do you check emails? No, but almost every human being that has an email ID and that is actively using an email ID would check their emails in the morning, right? So imagine the burst of traffic that's received by these email servers every morning by so many people. Such a workload, such as what an email server would see is called a bursty workload. And when we have a bursty workload, we see that persistent storage media such as SSDs have a very high tail latencies. Now the problem of having high tail latencies such as 99 percentile latencies or any nines greater than that is it would it might violate the service contracts and these violations could cost a lot to the service to the server manager or the server um, architect or basically the entity that is managing the server and that is responsible to serve the clients. So persistent memory now can provide, or at least it promises the guarantee to provide much lower latencies compared to these, uh, compared to what we see in SSDs, especially for such type of bursty workloads. The CPUs can skip the page cache and perform memory IO operations directly on the persistent memory DIMMs. That's again a big advantage because all an additional operation means additional time, additional resources. Now, the, the shorter the intermediate stack, definitely the faster the access, the easier the access, it, consumes less resources, hence less contention, hence better. Now, putting all these advantage of persistent memories into our pocket, are we convinced that it's worth studying about this amazing technology and how this amazing technology is used today? What are the challenges that this technology is uh, projecting to us? And what is it that we could do together to solve those? and maybe come up with a new solution that could make a big impact tomorrow. So, well, I hope you are convinced and let's continue with our discussion. So now that we know what are the prospective advantages of persistent memory, let's look, let's take a quick look at use cases or what could be the practical applications for such a type of memory that sits between the advan it gives advantage of persistence and capacity such as storage such as other storage devices and it gives the quick access latency and high throughput low high much better quality of service lower latency all these benefits of data and byte addressability of data so looking at the application we could use such a memory could could put could be put to a positive use in applications such as fraud detection. Persistent memory improve the speed at which financial institute and insurance companies can perform data analytics on millions of records. Now, when we are performing fraud detection, definitely we are dealing with huge amount of data, right? So that's millions of records to detect fraud transactions and preventing financial losses and impact on a brand name. So such definitely who wants to be a victim of fraud, right? We don't, we rely on um, fraud, fraud detection techniques that are used by, let's say if, if, if I'm a client to a bank, then I would rely on the bank to be able to like whatever deposits, whatever my sum, whatever salary is getting deposited into the bank, 
I'm relying on the bank to keep it safe, right? So bank, it's bank's duty to ensure that this amount stays safe without being um, troubled by any fraud, fraudulent activities. And in order to do that, it needs to process large amount of data. So for such a workload, we are using the capacity advantage of persistent memory, a huge capacity sitting right next accessible by CPU directly. Second, for another types of workloads such as cyber, th cyber threat analysis, definitely we could use persistent memory because again, Persistent memory allows companies to move quickly to detect and defend against increasing cyber threats. Now, persistent memories gives us an advantage of low IO access latency. Uh, having a lesser, having much lower access latency so to large portion of data would definitely accelerate the computation that detects cyber threats, analyzes them, maybe removes them, all this. Third, web scale personalization. Yes, now moving a bit away from threat analysis and fraud, it also helps persistent a memory technology such as persistent memory can also be useful to increase our day-to-day -day routine experience of web. Basically, persistent memory allows companies to tailor online experience of users such as us by returning relevant content and advertising to users. So if I'm interested in something, in order for a company to detect what I'm interested in, probably at the, in the background, it's processing a lot of data. And let's say if I'm interested in a pair of shoes today, I may not be interested in a pair of shoes after a couple of days. I would have already got that, right? So it's very important to to do all this data processing to find out personalized interest at a quick rate, a rate before a customer loses interest into that. So um, the speed and the capacity to manage large amount of data again helps also to do this. Other things like financial trading, definitely financial trading applications can use persistent memory to rapidly process and execute financial transaction allowing them to gain competitive advantage to create higher revenue opportunity. And finally, few other things, few more things, obviously we have many more applications of uh, where persistent memory could be used apart from this list on the screen, but these are just few examples. So finally, some other things like internet of things, faster processing of huge data in real time reduces the time to find the value of certain things. So definitely it helps to accelerate internet of things and processing done at the edge. And my favorite thing, gaming. This is one of our recent ongoing research where we are exploring how persistent memory can help us to accelerate video games. So successful rendering of video games need quick access to large amount of data. And definitely it seems like a good spot to take advantage of persistent memory, right? So these are just few, very few examples of where we could take, um, where we could use such an amazing technology such as persistent memory. And definitely you can, I'm sure you are already thinking of many, many more examples, right? Who doesn't want better performance larger capacity, less heavy on the pocket, so cost efficient, all these benefits. And these are the benefits that persistent memory is promising to us compared to other existing technologies that we have. So looking at, um, in, in a tabular format, in comparing different properties of um, DRAM, and flash memory such as SSD across different axes. We see that persistent memory, especially now as we go deeper and deeper into this lecture, because one of the most popular persistent memory form today is Optane. Optane SSDs and Optane DIMM. 
we would be focusing our discussion more and more into that because that's the one that's available to us to to use and that's the one that more and more people more and more companies are, are we are seeing that they are starting to use today so it makes sense to learn more about those so if we see the axis of speed we see that dram is very fast while ssds are we cannot say that they are slower but they are definitely slower than dram right their ssds are much faster than hard disk but still slower than dram persistent memory sits somewhere in between which is slower than dram but faster than ssd how about cost now dram is expensive if not then we would have just just we would have had systems with large amount of dram with much cheaper cost than what we are seeing today so dram is expensive while ssds we see relatively costlier than hard disk but in last decade we have seen like a steep decline of for dollar per gb for ssd so they have become more and more affordable persistent memory again sits somewhere in between which is less costly than dram but should but it is bit more costly or it is more costlier than ssd volatility and non volatility now volatility is non volatility is the property of being able to persist something as the name goes persistent memory definitely it provides the property of non volatility same as what other persistent storage media provides such as hard disk or ssds we do not have this non volatility property in dram to keep a note of that latency persistent memory guarantee lower latency lower than ssds we could say that but not lower than dram somewhere a bit higher than dram but still lower than ssds endurance now we know that ssds do have they are more in sense because they don't have any mechanical part so they are um, tend to live more than hard disk but they have an another problem of internal limited amount of programmatory cycle so their endurance is low compared to dram number of times we can write and read to a particular dram cell is way higher when we compare number of times that we can write and read to a particular ssd cell persistent memory sits somewhere in between again even in this property which so persistent memory memories guarantee to provide around 1000 times the endurance of nand flash so you can see like much better than nand flash right so with all these properties now into our pocket we can definitely conclude that persistent memory is a good suit to sit somewhere between dram and other persistent storage media such as ssds right and that's exactly what brings us next to this storage system hierarchy 